Welcome to today's video. I am planning to get some work done on the skyline and hopefully by the end of today have the moped fully running and we can take it out for its first rip. But as I said, skyline is first. I want to replace the IACV valve today, but before I do that, I'm going to pressurize everything and check again for vacuum leaks. And then I'm going to show you where it's leaking on the IACV valve, which will explain to you guys why we're replacing it. So my tools for that are very simple. My little boost leak tester that I made with some PVC pipe and a little tire egg um, like stem here. And then we just got the little compressor that plugs into the car and a bottle of soapy water, which we spray on everything and look for bubbles. So I'm just going to disconnect the pod filter here to the silicon coupler, slide the PVC pipe in there and tighten that as tight as I can, pressurize everything, and then uh, we'll start spraying that water and show you where all those leaks are. Got everything all hooked up and ready to go. Let's turn this sucker on. We gotta wait a little bit, and then when this is around 10 PSI is when I'll start spraying and looking for leaks. So the system is pressurized now, and I just started going over everything and spraying things with soapy water, and I've made uh, two more discoveries that we need to fix, but the ISCV valve is still definitely, you can see all the bubbles coming out there, and then you can also see the bubbles coming out around the plug here. All right, so that definitely still needs to be replaced. The next two things that I found was one, my fuel pressure regulator. So I need to seal um, the threads here um, with uh, probably some just thread sealant. I'll just put some thread sealant on that and that'll fix that. Uh, the second thing I found is while the flange on my blow off valve isn't leaking at all when I spray it, look at all the bubbles coming out of the bob itself. Look at that, pretty big vacuum leak there. So what I figured out is if I take the vacuum lime off it and completely plug it, there's no leak there anymore come from the inside of the bulb. So it looks like the diaphragm is screwed in this blow-off valve, which is why it's probably leaking so much through here. So I'm going to completely remove that vacuum line, probably like, you know, just plumb it off or use a different connector there straight through so we don't have that three-way going on there. And then that way, that'll stop that vacuum leak there as well. But yeah. There we go. So that looks like that's all of my vacuum leaks. I sprayed over everything else. So we're gonna get the ISCV valve switched out today. I'm gonna to thread seal the fuel pressure regulator. I need to be very careful that I mark this with a pen though, so that I don't um, accidentally wind this like tighter or softer because this will affect my tune. So I need to make sure that I mark this so I don't move it um, and that stays in the same spot. And then this is just as simple as take out the T piece there and put a straight piece in there. And then all vacuum leaks should be fixed on this car and we can finally get idle, idle dialed in perfect. And all because of this simple tool, which is about to pop off. Oh my gosh, let's shut that off. That's literally about to pop out. <laughs> and when it does, it scares the crap out of me. It makes a big bang. All right, cool. So um, we've got a little bit of work to get done. I'm probably going to do the ICV valve and the easy stuff first and we'll leave the hard stuff to the end, which is, uh, sorry, I'm gonna do the ISCV valve last because that's the hardest thing, do the fuel pressure regulator and the um, blow off valve vacuum line fix because those things are super easy to do. So I'll do that now, we'll get to it. I've been working away and I've already replaced this whole line here with just a single line because there's no need for it to have that T-piece in there if I wasn't hooking it up to the blow-off valve. And as you guys know, I have this blocked off with a little like block-off plate in behind there. So that's not even functioning. It's just there to like clamp it all down. Um, and I took off the ISCV valve. I can peel this gasket off now. This old one, which has actually come off in one piece and didn't break. That's super rare. But you can also see the gasket started failing. You can kind of see that it's been I don't know if the camera is going to focus on that, but you can really see like almost like what a head gasket kind of looks like. Hang on. Where you can see, yeah, see it's been breaching past the gasket around the edges there. So it was about due to fail anyways. So that's why we got the brand new one here. And I got the old one here compared to the new one. You can really see the difference there is kind of a little bit crazy. Um, but one thing you can really notice is the inside of this is just completely shot like all full of carbon and dirty. Now I did take this off and clean it once before, so um, it's gotten pretty dirty and filthy all over again. Um, another place that like super gets clogged up in these is here and here. So if you're having idling issues and you don't have a vacuum leak around the ICV valve itself, you can pull it all apart. There's some really good information on uh, the forums out there on how to disassemble these and clean them apart with brake cleaner. I've done it a fair few times. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it. And you can really get a good look here at these cracks now. 
we just focus on that. It's kind of hard to see, the camera doesn't really see it, but all the way around the resin here is split. You can kind of see it there in the corner, but yeah. And uh, then this plug around the plug here is split too. Very hard to see. But anyways, that's been replaced with this brand new one. I almost want to go wash my hands before I put this on so I don't dirty it. Yeah, I might go do that because I'm just OCD about keeping that thing clean. <laughs> Oh man, um, anyway, I'm gonna quickly do that, put the new gasket on as well, and we'll go from there. Just finished fixing everything. The fuel pressure regulator was super easy to do. I have this really awesome Loctite uh, thread sealant that I used on that, so that shouldn't be leaking anymore. Um, and obviously, the IACV valve has now been completely replaced, and we got that whole new hose in there, so. We shouldn't have any more vacuum leaks in any of those problem areas. The only thing I, I need to adjust now is the idle screw on the ISCV valve. That definitely needs to come out a little bit. But otherwise, we should have no more vac leaks. So, got the compressor on, build up some pressure, and then uh, we'll start spraying and check for some leaks. We're already at about 5 psi, so we can probably start spraying now and checking in those previous problem spots. But... Looking good to me. Nothing there. Nothing there. And then the only other thing was the blow off valve, which I'm pretty confident is gonna have no problems at all. Nothing at all. Vacuum leaks solved. Hell yeah, I'm gonna wait till it gets to 10 PSI and go again, but that looks very promising. I got the pod filter back on and took off all of the uh, boost leak testing stuff. I want to see if this thing's going to idle now that there's like pretty much, well, there isn't a single vacuum leak on this thing now. So I'm curious if it's going to even idle at all. Ooh. Sounds so much smoother. Let's see where it's at. Now this is cold start. So I know we compensated for that. And if I turn the AC off, Oh, my IATC, IAT sensor is not plugged in. I forgot to plug that back in. My bad, ECU's probably having a little heart attack. Uh, there we go. Now it'll actually know what the IATs are. Need to tidy up that wiring a bit. There we go, yeah, 29, much better. Dude, this thing's stable. This thing would always idle at 1,000. It's down 200 RPM right now. It's literally idling at like, what, 780, 790? Okay, that's too low. We're going to have to actually up that. We want it to be around 850, maybe even 900, just a little bit more than normal. But that's a good sign. This thing would always be idling, literally at 1,000. That's a really good sign. I'm actually thoroughly impressed. So it seems like this car has literally had these vacuum leaks for the longest time because now it's settled after the cold start. It's idling at like 650 RPM, which is insane. Literally this thing wouldn't idle anywhere near that before and it wouldn't be stable. It'd be hunting all over the place right now if you tried to get it to idle there. That's insane. I've never heard this thing idle so low before. Listen to it. It's so quiet. <laughs> Oh my god, it's it's getting lower. It's like 620, 630 now. Wow. That's so interesting. Alright, I better shut this off before Karen Karen's get upset. But that's a massive difference. So now that we're finished with the skyline, I'm gonna start working on the moped. And like I said, really it's it's super easy, everything that I need to do. I just have to change the primer bulbs, which I got this pack of 10 off Amazon for literally $5. So uh, if that's ever a problem again, I've got too many <laughs> spare. Um, and then I got to completely remove the fuel tank, which is like three bolts. But what I can see here is it just looks like the little rubber like sealer, like thing that slots into the hole on the tank has come out. So I'll push that back in and I'll seal it up with some JB Weld around there as well to stop it from happening again. And then this thing should be ready for us to shred tomorrow, which I'm actually super excited about. I'm obviously gonna clean it as well with some parts cleaner and everything. Um, I'm inside right now just because it's easy to work on this thing in the AC. It's also dark outside and I don't wanna get eaten alive with mosquitoes. So pretty much tomorrow morning, we're gonna take this thing for a rip, 
go to the gas station, I'll get some gas for it. And um, so I've already got two stroke oil, so I'll be able to mix up a batch of uh, fuel for this and fill this thing up and go for a little drive. I'm actually super excited. This thing's gonna be sick. So I'm finished working on the moped now. I got the carburetor all back together with the new primer bulb there. So you can see that I absolutely aced it. I literally winged it and just guessed that these would be the right size and bought these off Amazon. And they literally were identical, perfect to the old ones. So that went on there, no problem at all. I cleaned up everything best I could, took off like all the extra oil and fuel that had leaked everywhere and gone everywhere. So that's all good. Um, and then the gas tank right now, I've got that JB Weld setting there. Um, I'm actually kind of glad I ended up doing this tonight because I forgot that the JB Weld I bought isn't the fast drying one. So this is like the full curing one, which takes up to 12 to 15 hours. So that means that tomorrow by the time I wake up and everything, it should have been about 12 hours by then. So it should be good for me to put back together, but I may still wait till lunchtime just to be sure. Um, but yeah, I'm super pumped to pretty much just put this thing back together tomorrow and take it for a rip. I never got to really work on like two stroke or four stroke little engines like this before. So, you know, like even though like while I was growing up, I got to ride friends dirt bikes and stuff. My parents never really had like, you, you know, we didn't really have a lot of money and things like that to buy like dirt bikes or quads and stuff like that and break them, rebuild the engines. Like I never got to experience that growing up. Um, so being able to work on this was super, super cool. And I don't know. I really dig it, I love it. The little carburetor, I couldn't get over how tiny that thing was. It was, it was really fun putting that back together because these four screws that you take out here for the primer bulb, it actually like the whole carburetor disassembles. It was really interesting. Anyways, um, so yeah, all back together. Tomorrow we'll finish uh, pretty much, you know, once that's set, we'll put it all back on and put some gas in there with some two stroke oil and we should be good. I think from what I read up, um, I think it even says like on here, 25, 25 to one. Uh, 25 two cycle oil, two stroke oil. Yeah, so 25 to one. So I should be able to mix that up, no problem for that, and we should be good. So before I went to the gas station, I filled up a jerry can full of gas, and this is a little one liter tank. I mixed up with the two stroke oil, which is why you can kind of see it's blue. Now I've adjusted the wheel and everything so that the drive shaft is touching the top of the wheel. So we should be able to just push off from this, and this should start without having to use the pull cord. And one other thing I figured out last night, is I did a bit of research on the website for the company that makes this and this is supposed to fall down. So after spending a bunch of time working on this and using a pair of multi-grips to get it to move because it was seized and rusted shut, we can now lift this and the whole thing folds down. So I had no idea that that did that. So this now means that we can just pick this whole guy up and put it in the back and take it to the track with us. We'll be able to literally fit this in the car like on the back seat or something like that when we go to Ebisu and things like that. So that means, babe, that you'll be able to ride this around while uh, we're at the track. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. May's gonna ride this today, if it starts. I hope it runs and works. Anyways, I'm just gonna lock this in there so it's not gonna fall over. Yeah, you're not putting it upside down like you did the other day? No, we're not gonna put it upside down where it's gonna leak stuff everywhere. That was the diff, by the way, not the scooter. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> you gotta speak loud. Yeah, Japanese summer is in full effect. If you don't hear this in summer in Japan, then it's not summer. This is literally just like summer in Japan. It's, you have the sound no matter what. All right. She's still a little seized up. I got a bunch of grease on my head, but it should be good. All right. I think I can just push up on this. Whoopsie. Awesome than that. Let's bring it up here. I feel so like uncoordinated this because I've never like used one before. Um, I think I just want like this on open. You gotta know, speak up. I don't really know like, like I don't think this thing even has a choke. So I'm just gonna try and push off with it and see if it'll start. I think that's the first thing to do. Whoa. All right, it's running now. It turns out you got to use the choke. This is a little choke here. And the kill switch does not work. So I have to just use the brake and stall it. But I should be able to now just push off and start this thing. It's smoking. 
It's so much fun. It bogs down a bit, like if you don't, I don't know, maybe the carburetor needs tuning or something. But once it's running and it's warmed up, it is sick. It's, it's not like crazy fast either. I don't know, it's really cool. Maybe I'll just do like one more quick lap and you guys can get a feeling of it, but it's so much fun. Can I use this to commute to work? So I, I guess, don't need I to guess take so. The you, it train. would take a long time to get there, but it's pretty easy. Like, you just hold the throttle open and push. It's scary. It's definitely like, it needs to warm up for sure. It doesn't like if you start on a hill. It's definitely of like course, yeah. flat ground. But it could also just be the, like, I don't have this set up right with this lever here. I need to play with it a bit, but it's sick. This is going to be so cool for the track. I'm pumped. I'm going to do one more quick drive by. Then you can just scream on the brakes and then it stalls out. Easy. I definitely want to fix this kill switch. I feel like that'll be safer for when May rides it because you're, like, you're pretty scared to drive this right now, right? Yeah. I'm gonna hurt myself. Yeah, I'm not letting you drive this unless you have like enclosed shoes and a helmet and maybe elbow pads and knee pads. <laughs> it will definitely catch you. Like if you hold the throttle open when you kick off, it'll like take off on you, especially once it's warmed up. This thing's cool. It's not too fast. It's not like crazy dangerous. I think we can do some cool tuning stuff with it. Get a bigger like CC motor upgrade. You can get some really cool upgrades for this thing. So we might mess around with that. But for now, I think I'm gonna leave it. I might go get the GoPro and put it on my head or a chest mount and take this thing for like a good like 15, 20 minute ride around the neighborhood. It's not too loud either. It's actually pretty quiet. It just sounds like a normal scooter, like a little moped. Mm. So I don't think like we'd get in trouble with noise complaints. Um, and it's so slow and such low like CCs that you don't need a license to drive this here or like a registration for it. So back inside the car it goes. All right, guys, I really wanted to take this thing for a ride just around the neighborhood and see how it goes. I've got the GoPro set up. Hopefully you can see everything pretty well. Let's go for a little kickoff and uh, have a bit of fun with this thing. This thing is so much fun. Um, I definitely wish it had a little bit more grunt for getting up some steeper hills. And I don't know if any of you guys know much about like two strokes and carburetors and stuff, but if you could help me with this. Um, I can't, like from the moment it starts, if I get it to, you know, warm up and run a bit, um, when I get on it and start like popping the throttle, I have to like really ease into it super slowly, otherwise it bogs down and stalls out. Once it's been like, you know, once I kind of like slowly work it up, then the throttle works like normal. So I don't know if there's something wrong where it's just dumping too much fuel or anything. Um, but even if the engine's fully warmed up, if I go to start it right now after just riding around for a bunch, if I start it right now, I still can't jump on the throttle right away. Like it has to ease into it. It's, it's kind of bizarre. So maybe, maybe I need to rebuild the carburetor and clean it out. I don't know. But this thing is sick. It seriously is. And it, like, it is a little bit loud. So I'm going to probably look into, uh, like maybe a little a little muffler or something just to make it a little bit quieter um it does dump the exhaust like out of here it's super bizarre like the exhaust gets piped into the frame like this is all boiling hot here and it kind of just shoots it out this little hole here it's, it's really cool don't really know like i think it also comes out of like the wheel section here as well i don't know though it's kind of interesting regardless this thing is super cool i want to make it a little bit quieter if i can just so you know, we don't bother too many Karens, but from what I can see, like everyone's reaction when they see me riding this thing is they literally just like love it and freak out and think it's the sickest thing ever. So there's that and it has used a fair bit of fuel already just from that little bit of riding. It's super cool. So much fun.
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm super pumped for the GoPad and uh, just being able to use it for practical like things, like at the track, make and run around on it, just get up to some shenanigans with it. Um, I obviously want to try to get it to run a little bit better. Like I said, it's got that kind of bogged down issue. I don't know if that's normal um, or if there's a way to fix that. Um, I think it could also be air filter related because like the air filters that are in there are kind of like just like I don't know, maybe it's like sucking it and preventing a bunch of airflow. So I may try taking that filter out and, and testing with that. Um, and then maybe I might change it to like a little pod filter kind of thing as well. Um, Cause I saw a bunch of kits like that for it. There's so many parts out there for this thing. It's insane. I was looking on Amazon the other day. Um, and then I, I did a bunch of research and found out that this particular model is actually kind of super rare. Like even in the States, this is like one of the original sport models apparently. And with the G2D engine, I think it's called. Um, this was like one of the first production runs or something. So um, it's pretty cool that I managed to find this here in Japan. It's for sale for so cheap, it runs, just needed a little bit of work, and yeah, I don't know, I think it's really cool. Um, obviously, uh, like I said, I still do plan on getting a bike for the channel, um, so keep an eye out for that. But for now, I'm really happy with this little GoPed scooter thing. I think it's sick, and uh, I think the next time we do a video with it, we need to get May riding it, so I need to get her some pads and some some gear. Maybe maybe we can just go to Upgrade and buy a full bike suit for it. <laughs> I'm just worried because sometimes uh, she's a little bit unco, and uh, I, don't, I don't think she'll hurt herself on it, but there's a high possibility that something strange that I never would of thought would happen would happen if she jumped on it so as long as she gets comfortable with it i think it'll be sick and she'll enjoy riding it to the convenience store and at the track and stuff like that so anyways guys smash the like button write us a comment if you have any advice on the goped build and the motor and that thing that i'm having issues with please let me know i'll see you in tomorrow's video peace out jamata